Welcome back. Let's dive into the next layer, the libraries. The libraries within Android are the so-called native libraries. So as you also can see on this page, the native libraries are handling different topics. So for example, SSL for secure communication is handled by the native libraries. Audio Manager is part of the native libraries. SQLite, which handles storage of data in a database, which is local on the device with SQLite. Also WebKit, which is a built-in web browser, is handled by the native libraries of Android. So yeah, some examples indeed are the SQLite for database management, OpenSSL for encryption, and the WebKit for web browsing. And in the labs, we will cover some of those topics in more detail. So some vulnerabilities for the libraries within Android could be vulnerabilities in SQLite or SQL injections. So this is one example of a vulnerability. So if there is a vulnerability in SQLite, then it might also be applicable for Android. So in this case, there was a vulnerability in SQLite, which is included by default in Android, iOS, Windows, and Mac. So a lot of systems were affected by this vulnerability. So that's in short, the libraries. And as you can see on the overview page, on the same level, there's also the Android runtime. The Android runtime consists of a specific virtual machine, the Dalvik virtual machine, which executes Dalvik bytecode. And there is the Android runtime environment, which executes Android application, which are packets in APK files. But we will handle this topic later. And Within the Android runtime environment, Android uses a head of time compilation, which is better for the performance of the operating system and also for the memory usage. But we will not cover this topic in more detail. If you want more details, you can also find it in the Android documentation. But as you can see in this picture, because Android is also based on Java, if you compare it with a regular Java application, we have the Java source code, so the .java file, or within Android, it could also be Kotlin. So the Java or Kotlin files with the source code, which is readable. Then you have the Java compiler, which compiles the Java files to class files, which contains bytecode and are of course less readable for the developer. And then the Java bytecode can be executed on the Java virtual machine. Yeah. For Android, the process is similar. Maybe it has some additional steps, but you write your apps within your IDE in Java or in Kotlin. Then you can compile and build your application. Then you also get class files, but within Android, there is a second compiler, the DEX compiler, which compiles the class files to DEX files or bytecode. And that DEX bytecode is compatible with the Dalvik virtual machine and will run on the Android device. Also in the next lessons, we will look into the reverse, uh, reverse way. So how you can decompile it, but decompilation is basically the same. You start with the DEX file and then you can decompile it and read it. And of course, also within the Java runtime environment, some vulnerabilities are applicable. So for example, a vulnerability from 2017 allows attackers to modify the code in the applications without affecting the signatures. So this vulnerability has something to do with the DEX files. So the compiled Java code, which could be modified or inside the packets file and could lead to a vulnerability. So just short example or another example that also in this layer, vulnerabilities are possible.